Imagine four passionate fans gathered around a comfy table, sipping hot chocolate and chatting about their favorite Gospels from the Bible. Each fan is obsessed with one of the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. This is what we want to try today with our Bible experts from Bible Cartoon. Welcome Grace, who loves the Gospel of Luke. Mitch who knows a lot about Matthew. Lizzie, who led us through Mark and myself. I am Leonard and I love the Gospel of John. Let's dive in. Okay, let's start by saying the best thing about Matthew. Jesus is this amazing king and teacher, right? He's always giving us these powerful lessons, like the Sermon on the Mount. It's like the blueprint for how to live as a follower of Jesus. Yeah, but you can't forget how Jesus is also this amazing miracle worker. In Mark, he's constantly on the move healing people and casting out demons. Like, there's barely any time for speeches, he's just doing stuff. But I totally get that teacher vibe too. Oh, for sure. In Luke, Jesus is always teaching and healing at the same time. And what's really cool is that he's showing how God's love is for everyone, the poor, the outsiders. Remember when he heals the ten lepers and only one comes back to thank him? That's classic Luke, showing Jesus' love in action. That's kind of like in John, when Jesus heals the blind man. But in John, it's also about what that healing means. Jesus says he's the light of the world, so healing the blind man is, like, a symbol of how Jesus helps us see the truth about God. Exactly. Jesus' actions and his teachings are showing us the same thing, he's fulfilling what was promised. Matthew connects Jesus to all those Old Testament prophecies to prove he's the real deal. Totally. And Luke does that too. Like, remember when Jesus reads from the scroll in the synagogue and says, Today this scripture is fulfilled in your hearing? That's him saying, I'm the one you've been waiting for. Oh yeah, in John it's even more direct. Jesus says things like, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He's constantly revealing who he is. Right, even in Mark. It's like, he doesn't say it as much, but is showing it with every miracle and every act of power. People are always like, who is this guy? And it's so obvious he's got divine authority. You know what's cool? In all our Gospels, Jesus loves to spend time with people that no one else cares about. In Luke, he's always hanging out with tax collectors and sinners, like Zacchaeus. It shows that he's a savior for everyone, not just the people who seem important. Oh, same in Mark. Like, Jesus heals this guy who's been living in the tombs, totally outcast by society, and he's like, come back to life. It's wild. Mark really shows Jesus crossing those boundaries. That happens in Matthew, too. Remember the centurion who asks Jesus to heal his servant? The centurion wasn't even Jewish, but Jesus still helps him because of his faith. It's showing that Jesus is for all people. And in John, you've got that story with the Samaritan woman at the well. That's a huge deal because Jews didn't usually talk to Samaritans, especially not women. But Jesus does, and he changes her life completely. Oh, oh. And miracles. I mean, come on, miracles are everywhere. In Mark, it's like miracle after miracle. Jesus feeds 5,000 people, he heals the paralyzed, he's casting out demons left and right. Yep, Matthew's got those too. And what's cool in Matthew is how these miracles often come right after Jesus teaches something important, almost like he's backing up his words with action. Same in Luke. Like when Jesus tells the parable of the Good Samaritan, he's showing that loving your neighbor is more than just words. Then he goes and lives it by healing people and helping those who are suffering. Oh, and in John, the miracles are called signs, right? Like. Turning water into wine wasn't just a party trick, it was a sign of Jesus' glory. And when he raises Lazarus from the dead, it's this huge foreshadowing of his own resurrection. Speaking of resurrections, that's like, the thing that all the Gospels point to, right? 
Jesus' death and resurrection is where everything comes together. Yeah, and what's amazing is how all four of our Gospels build up to that moment. In Matthew, it's the climax of the story. Jesus is the king who sacrifices himself to save his people. And in Luke, it's this powerful moment where Jesus' compassion is front and center. Even on the cross, he's forgiving people and offering hope to the criminal beside him. Exactly. In John, Jesus says, it is finished, and you just feel that he's completed everything he came to do, to save us and show us God's love. It's so deep and personal. And in Mark, it's almost like a surprise ending. You've got all this action and suspense, and then boom, Jesus is resurrected, and his followers are left in awe. It's like, wait, what just happened? But that's the point. God's plan is bigger than we can imagine. So basically, all of us are saying that the Gospels tell the same story in different ways. Jesus is teaching, healing, loving, and, most importantly, he's saving the world through his death and resurrection. Yeah. Whether he's called a king, a savior, the son of God, or the light of the world, it's all the same Jesus, doing the same incredible things. And even though Mark keeps it short, and John gets all deep, we're all showing how Jesus came to bring God's kingdom and change everything. Exactly. It's like each of our Gospels focuses on a different angle, but they're all shining a light on the same truth, Jesus is God's way of showing how much he loves us. In the end, while we each have our favorite gospel, the gospels aren't competing with each other, they're like four pieces of a puzzle, each helping us understand more about who Jesus is. Whether he's teaching on a mountain, healing a blind man, or speaking words of eternal life, it's all the same incredible story, Jesus, the Savior of the world.